Delray Beach. It's called the most fun small town in America. Its main drag, Atlantic Avenue, is filled with restaurants, boutiques, and art galleries. And just steps away lies the turquoise waters of the Atlantic. For residents and visitors alike, Delray Beach has always been considered one of the happiest seaside towns in America. And just up the street from Delray Beach is another happy place. It's our course of the week, the Lost City Golf Club in Atlantis, Florida. Now, Lost City recently came out of a total renovation of all three of its nine hole courses. Back in the 1950s, chances are you'd find more cattle than people inland in South Florida. Yep, cattle ranching in this part of the Sunshine State was big back then. But things were about to change. In 1958, a couple of local businessmen got together and purchased an 828-acre ranch. This land, along with several other parcels, would give birth to a golfer's paradise just several miles from the Atlantic. In 1960, work began on an 18-hole golf course, an inn, and a clubhouse. And soon after that, the Atlantis Country Club and Inn opened for play. It was a semi-private club whose area property owners were permitted to join on an annual basis. The initial 18 holes of golf were designed by William Mitchell. Then shortly after that, the club grew into 27 holes of golf when Mitchell was brought back in to design the East Course. Riley, tell me, is it the, the late Jackie Gleason was a member and had a home on the course. No respect at all. He was often seen golfing and entertaining friends. In the early 70s, the members of the semi-private Atlantis Country Club and its original name purchased a club and renamed it the Atlantis Golf Club. In 2017, the club's name was changed once again, this time to the Lost City Golf Club. Over the years, improvements to Mitchell's original design have been made. Then in 2021, the Tom Fazio design team, led by Tom Fazio II, was called upon to renovate all 27 holes of this traditional Florida layout. New tee boxes were added. The green complexes were totally reworked. Bunkers were moved and additional bunkers were added and new rough areas were created. Basically regrassed the rough, the greens, uh, redid all of the bunkers. So all the bunkers are new. The greens all have different undulations in them. Um, some greens have been moved side to side, some front to back. When you look at the golf course, it looks like a brand new golf course. Fazio also made this golf course a bit longer. Now it plays to nearly 7,100 yards from the back tee. While the added length certainly adds to the challenge of playing this 27-hole facility, the true test of golf may come on your second and third shots into these green complexes. There's some spots around the greens where you definitely don't want to miss it. And knowing what section of the green to hit to can make all the difference in the world to scoring out here. Right, you definitely need to hit it in the right, in the correct section of the of the greens in order to have a chance at birdie, um, or even just getting up and down or two putting for for par. Uh, definitely need to hit it in the correct sections for sure. And throughout all 27 holes out here at Lost City, you'll find a great mix of long and short par fours, par fives that are average to above average in length and par threes that will challenge even the best ball strikers. Par threes are, are tough, um, especially you play all the way back. There's a you know a hole on the um, 
on the east course, the fifth hole, which if you put it all the way back, you're about 250. So for me, for me, that would be driver probably. <laughs> and while the north and south courses are very similar in design features and routing, when you add in the east course nine here at Lost City, all of a sudden the golf course has a totally different feel. Absolutely, yeah. The um, north and south are very similar, like you said. Um, the east course has a lot more water. The fairways are a little wider, but it definitely provides a different option. Um, and it's a it's a great golf course over there. A lot of the members like it. Over there, you got definitely more open fairways, um, a little bit different view, and, and definitely some more water. Lost City Golf Club. Its name says it all. A traditional Florida golf club designed by William Mitchell and renovated and redesigned by Tom Fazio II. 27 holes of fantastic golf in Atlantis, Florida. I think there's a lot of variety in the holes. I think all the holes are really good. Hi, I'm Mindy B from Fit for Golf, Fit for Life, and we're here at the beautiful Porter's Neck Country Club in Wilmington, North Carolina. You know, whenever I get in the sand and I have an approach shot or a bunker shot, even a fairway shot from the, from the sand, it is very important, and I know, that if I move my lower body, I am not going to have a consistent shot each time. I need to dig my feet in, I need to do a slight forward press, and I need to stay as if I'm in cement from my hips down to my feet so that I can get a good solid bunker shot. So today I'm going to show you a couple exercises that help work with the stability of your hips, the strength of your lower body, so that you can also have a consistent bunker shot as well. So what I want you to do is stand tall. I'm going to be using my club here for a little bit of a balance. So stand tall, feet are together, and I want you to just shift your weight just slightly where you can get your one leg to come up. So I'm gonna lift my right leg. I'm gonna stand tall on my left leg. Try not to lean into where you're gonna put this hip out. You wanna be very strong and tall as if there's a bar going from your toe, through your knee, through your hip, up through your left shoulder. Okay, you're gonna lift up your leg. Oh, I'm gonna say about 45 degrees, a little bit less. Just go ahead and start to lift that leg up and down. Doesn't have to be big. Your whole goal here is to really think about putting your mind in this muscle right here. These are your hip stabilizers. There are also a lot of rotators in there. You got your, your hip flexor, you got your TFL, you got your glute minimus, glute maximus. There's a lot of other ones working in it, glute medius. All part of that hip joint. So I'm just gonna lift up and down here. Now it's important not to just lift and then let it drop, but it's important to lift and then resist it down. Lift and then resist it down. So I'm leaning a little bit over here. You can keep your knee slightly unlocked, but think about lifting your rib cage off of your hips. So now I'm gonna add a little kick to it. I'm gonna turn my toe out. Woo, external rotators. Now I'm working on those. I can feel not only these movers and these mobilizers over here, I can feel these stabilizers really starting to burn and kick in. Okay, now you're gonna turn, you're gonna turn your toe in. These are internal hip rotators. Okay, like I said, it's a very basic, simple move, not necessarily easy, because you will feel these muscles if they've been sleeping for a while. So, toe forward, maybe 10 times, toe up 10 times, toe down 10 times. Okay, we've got one more. I'm gonna go the other side to give this side a break. So this is the same thing, you're going to lift up again. This time you're gonna point your toe. You're gonna stand real tall. I like to squeeze my glutes underneath and I'm gonna draw an imaginary circle right here with my entire leg, not my ankle, my entire leg. Here's what makes it so important. If your whole body moves, you're not working on stability. You're moving everything. But if you can keep your whole body still and make little tiny counterclockwise circles 10 times, and then clockwise circles 10 times, whoo, you're gonna feel it on both hips. Okay, now I feel more sturdy 
Now I'm ready to go into the bunker. Now I'm ready to really hit a really strong bunker shot, knowing that, that my lower body is gonna be very stable. Okay, for those exercises and more, go visit my website, fitforgolfusa.com. You know, we talked about the similarities of the North and South courses here at our course of the week, the Lost City Golf Club in Atlantis, Florida, and how the East course differs. On the East course, you find more force carries, especially if you're playing from the tips. Here at hole number six, you've got a par four that plays to a very healthy 465 yards, and you have a force carry over the H2O en route to the fairway. Then on your second shot, you'll be taking aim for a well-protected green. Now the only saving grace to number six is that the green does slope from back to front. Hole number six on the east course is a straightaway par four that can be very challenging to play. And if you're playing number six from the tips, you'll need to carry the water off the tee. Sometimes the straightest holes are the toughest holes because they don't give you a defined shape on how to hit your shot. So you really got to pick a target and, and commit to it. And while it's important to find the short grass off the tee here at number six, it's just as important to find the right spot on the green with your approach shot. Kind of similar to, to a lot of the holes here with the greens that have been changed. Um, you need to be, your distance control with your irons is going to need to be very good in order to, to score out here. Um, if it's off by a little bit or you're not having the best day ball striking, you're going to be using a wedge a lot and, and or having some long putts with some tricky slopes to, to two putt. And if you miss the green here at number six, just by a little bit, you could be scrambling to get up and down and save bar. If you're not comfortable hitting, hitting sand shots with consistency, you may have to play away from the hole on, on some of these shots in order to not get yourself in a lot of trouble and maybe just take a bogey when, when, when you have to out here. Hi, my name is Mason Colling. I'm the director of golf at Lost City Golf Club, and I'm here today to show you how to hit a high pitch shot um, after you've short-sided yourself from around the greens. Um, off these tight Bermuda lies here in South Florida, we need to do a couple of the following things in order to be successful. We need to use the bounce of the club to interact with the turf. So the bounce of the club or the sole of the club would be the bottom um, of our wedge here. We do not want to have the leading edge interacting with the turf at all. So the best way to do that is to feel, as you're making your practice swings, that you feel the club interacting with the turf with the bottom of the club. So to set up to hit a shot like that, I'm going to get relatively close to the ball. My, hands, my hand position is going to be pretty upright, so the shaft is going to stand more vertical than normal. The ball position will be center or it could be slightly forward depending on how high you want to hit your shot. As you take the club back, we're going to have very little wrist hinge, but we will have the toe of the club look up in the air. Now the reason for this is the more we get that toe of the club in the air, the more exposure to the sole or the bounce of the club we are going to have through impact. The last piece of it is we want to imagine that when we get back to the ball that the shaft is pretty much straight up and down. We don't want to have too much lean because that will deal off the club and also expose the leading edge to the turf. So let me do a little bit of a demonstration here. So I'm going to take the club back with the toe in the air. I'm going to try to match the shaft with the, the grip with the club head as we interact with the ball and basically feel like we're sweeping the turf. And that should produce a very high shot that goes right in the hole like that one. If you look at the scorecard here at Lost City, you would think that all the par fives are reachable in two for the long hitters, and it might be the case. But here in the south course's hole number five, I don't think you want to play it that way. There are just too many variables up by the green to come into play. So the prudent play played as a three-shot par five. 
The only problem is you still have to hit a very good approach shot into this green. And it only goes to show on this newly renovated layout that having a good short game is the key to success out here at Lost City. Of the six par fives out here at Lost City, hole number five on the south course is the second longest. From the back black tee, this par five stretches out to 540 yards. Pretty much straight away. And while there's not a lot of trouble to be found off the tee, you are heading to one of the tighter fairways on the entire layout. And once you do find the short grass off the tee, it's decision time. Do you go for the green in two if you're long? Or do you play it as a three shot par five? Longer hitters can have a chance to go for it in two. There's a lot of bailout to the left. There is water with a bulkhead short right of the green, so if you get that right pin placement, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be a, definitely a tough second shot. And if you play it as a three shot par five, your third shot into this green will require your full attention but it's, it's a good hole because risk reward and, and there's a lot of room to the left. You just gotta avoid that bunker that's front left of the green and you're okay. Golf centric, it's a term that gets thrown around a lot lately, especially in the private club arena. Here at our course of the week, the Lost City Golf Club in Atlantis, Florida, that term takes on a whole new meaning. Lost City is a golf club pure and simple. And that's the reason why this club solidifies the term golf centric. One of the things that's always impressed me about the place is how many different generations keep coming back. Uh, and that to me tells us a lot about the club. Since 1960, Lost City Golf Club has truly been a golfer's paradise. We've got a terrific mix now of both younger and older golfers. We have any number of members who are second or third generation. Another unique aspect to this club, there are no tee times. You can come out and play anytime you like. And that bodes well for today's fast-paced lifestyle. The camaraderie we have here and the ability to play golf whenever you want with all kinds of different levels of golfers uh, are, I think, a couple of our main attributes. Apart from the 27 holes of Tom Fazio II Design Golf, Lost City is also home to a very nice practice facility, complete with a full-length driving range featuring a sun awning. And during the recent golf course renovation, a brand new short game practice facility was added. The club is also home to a casual, but nicely appointed clubhouse. And within the clubhouse, you'll find the newly renovated men's locker room. The only other sort of amenities besides golf is we have a couple of pickleball courts, which have been hugely popular. This is a golf club and in fact our mission going forward is to make it even more what we call golf centric. So it's easy to see why so many people have called Lost City Golf Club a hidden gem in the heart of Palm Beach County. I think it's a great value and I think that's what I hear back from our members. I think if you took a survey of all the members out here in Lost City, they would say the strength of their 27-hole facility is in the par threes. Heck, five of the six par threes play to over 200 yards, the longest being 245 from the tips. It's hole number five on the east course. Here on the north course, hole number four plays to only 175 yards. Yet, 
Trouble awaits each and every golfer who cannot find the putting surface here at hole number four. Of all the par threes out here at Lost City, hole number four on the north course is the shortest. Yet, of all the par threes, it just might be the toughest. You really got to hit a, a good tee shot. If you miss on any side of the green, your ball is going to ricochet away from the away from the green. You're going to be left with the tough up and down, no matter where you where you leave it. If your tee shot misses the green and you end up in a green side bunker you'll certainly face a tough up and down. I think it's going to be very difficult, especially if you short side yourself. In those bunkers, it's not going to be the easiest up and down for sure. The same holds true if you miss the green and end up in some gnarly grass. The green itself is pretty receptive as it slopes from back to front, but it does have some subtle breaks to it. The par three fourth on the north course here at Lost City. Not the longest par three on the layout, but certainly one of the toughest. You know, I think that's one of the great par threes out here. You really got to hit a stand up and hit a great iron shot in order to in order to make a three. You know, hopefully a two, but definitely make a three in that hole. And that's going to do it for this week's show. We do want to give special thanks to Mason Collin, Ian Crawford, Michael Dolan and the entire staff here at the Lost City Golf Club in Atlantis, Florida. A private South Florida club steeped in history whose sole purpose is to provide excellent facilities for its members to play and enjoy this great game. I'm Alan Hunter for all of us here at Golf America. Hit them long and straight and we'll see you next time.